unveiling the intriguing world of molecular orbital dynamics. Celebrating the dance of opposing spaces, unveiling the intriguing world of molecular orbital dynamics. Welcome to the intriguing realm of quantum entanglement. Brace yourself for an exploration of an extraordinary phenomenon that binds particles together, defying the traditional rules of physics. In the quantum domain, particles can become entangled, establishing an invisible connection that persists across any distance. When particles are entangled, their properties, such as spin or polarization, become interrelated. Astonishingly, these correlations remain intact even when the particles are separated by considerable distances. Should one particle be measured, its entangled partner instantaneously adjusts its state, mirroring the measurement outcome. This instantaneous correlation defies classical intuition, but has been observed in countless experiments, leading scientists to leverage this phenomenon for various applications. Quantum teleoperation, for instance, enables the transfer of quantum information by exploiting entanglement to recreate a particle's state elsewhere. Quantum entanglement continues to challenge our comprehension of the fundamental nature of reality. Imagine an electron depicted alongside its antiparticle counterpart in opposition to the central nucleus. Acknowledging that electrons do not orbit nuclei precisely, but rather exhibit movement on one side, their corresponding antiparticles should occupy the opposite side with differing orientations. This leads to distinct spins and movements, one is opposite to the other. Each orbital can accommodate a maximum of two electrons, which necessitates the presence of two entangled particles associated with each electron on the opposing side to balance and stabilize the orbital's rotation around the nucleus. Consequently, we arrive at a dumbbell-like shape where the momenta of the particles balance and mirror one another, but in opposing directions. To differentiate between these two distinct momenta within an atomic shell, we label the electron that moves in the opposite direction of clockwise rotation as an electron and its clockwise moving counterpart as a positron particle. For instance, hydrogen possesses a single electron, thus it has a positron orbiting against the direction of electron motion in its orbital. On the other hand, helium contains two electrons to fill its one's orbital. As a result, it harbors two positions on the opposite side of the orbital, revolving in contrary material motion in this double dome-like space. These two opposing rotational spaces are connected through the nucleus at their midpoint, which I will refer to as the Gummini home for the sake of conversation. However, it's crucial to note that each orbital can only hold a maximum of two electrons. This implies that while helium's two electrons can comfortably occupy its 1s orbital, the third electron, as found in lithium, necessitates occupation of the next higher energy level orbital, the 2s orbital. It's important to emphasize that the conceptual framework presented here, incorporating the addition of two positrons to balance power and establish neutral charge regions, diverges from conventional quantum physics understanding of atomic structure. As we progress to the subsequent element, boron, boasting five electrons, we encounter a scenario where more electrons exist than available orbitals can accommodate. This leads to the fifth electron entering the next higher energy orbital level, the 2p orbital. This orbital assumes a unique dumbbell-like hexagonal shape. Among these three 2p orbitals, each is oriented perpendicular to the others. Visualizing this, an orange orbital extends along the z-axis. One side of this orbital accommodates the electron particle, while the opposite side hosts the positron particle. Every 2p orbital can house a maximum of two particles on each side. When an atom gains energy or acquires an additional electron, the electron migrates to the next available 2p orbital along the y-axis. Subsequently, the third electron moves along the x-axis. This arrangement leads to the electron and positron traversing distinct paths within the orbits. This prompts scientists to perceive the electron as rotating in both directions, an observation facilitated by devices measuring non-coordinated activity in electron particles linked to positrons. However, we recognize that electrons and positrons follow distinct laws of motion, revolving in opposing orbits. Hence, specific experimental conditions may yield observations of either of these opposing orbits. To distinguish these orbitals, we assign separate labels to each, each associated with a linear axis. For the 2p orbitals, they are identified as 2px, 2py, and 2pz. Similarly, their corresponding opposite particles are positioned on the opposite side of the orbitals. As a result, p-orbitals can be depicted as having a dumbbell shape with two loops. 
The complete p-orbital within the atomic shell comprises three dumbbell-shaped orbitals, permitting a maximum occupancy of six electrons and six positrons within this domain. With all orbitals now fully occupied, we reach a state where the ones and twos orbitals each hold two electrons and two positrons. Meanwhile, the two p orbitals house a total of six electrons in their red path and six positrons in their blue trajectory. Through calculations, we deduce a sum of 10 electrons and 10 positrons, constituting the element neon. As a noble gas found at the far end of the periodic table group, neon's uniqueness stems from its six electrons exclusively occupying the p orbitals. Consequently, atoms achieve their electron capacity and are unable to accommodate additional electrons. This distinct property sets elements within this group apart as individual entities, contrasting with oxygen molecules where two oxygen atoms bond. Continuing down the periodic table, sodium, with its 11 electrons, emerges as the next element. The additional electron occupies the highest energy level available, the 3s orbital. This orbital's heightened energy results in electrons being, on average, positioned farther from the nucleus compared to the 1s, 2s, or 2p orbitals that envelop them. This transition manifests as the other orbitals existing within the 3s orbital, thus enabling sodium to initiate electron acquisition within the 3s orbital. With further progression through the periodic table, numerous elements and additional orbitals unfold. Transitioning to the 3s orbital, housing higher energy and capable of accommodating two electrons and two positrons. The exploration then proceeds to the 3p orbitals, akin to the 2p orbitals, consisting of three dumbbell-shaped orbitals, 3px, 3py, and 3pz. Each of these can hold two electrons and two positrons. With each orbital fully occupied, encompassing two electrons on one side and two positrons on the opposing side, a total of six electrons and six positrons are housed within the three 3p orbitals. An argon gas completes all its circuits, and this element remains single. Progressing further, the 3d orbitals emerge, encompassing five pentagonal-shaped orbitals. These d orbitals can contain up to 10 electrons and 10 positrons. The journey continues to the 4f orbitals, composed of seven loop-shaped orbitals. The f orbitals have the capacity for up to 14 electrons and 14 positrons. In this manner, we can conclude the Umini periodic table by introducing several new and larger orbits. For a more detailed and clearer understanding of this topic, I invite your attention to the Dello book series. This will further enhance your comprehension and provide additional insights into the subject matter.